KJV, please. Let me use your Bible. He's leaving. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, my device is hanging. Um, near KJV. Okay. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, that was where Pastor Topwe started this series. That no other foundation, no other foundation can anyone lay, but it's Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, with silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Praise the Lord. You are God's building. Jesus is the foundation. Or Christ is the foundation. Um, we know from experience, it, architecture, that foundation is critical for any building. And that the nature of the building or how the building will eventually you know, go up, the extent to which a building can go, the foundation will determine that. If there is, um, if you are building, you will determine how high you want the building to go, the weight you want the building to carry, those are the information that will determine what you put in the foundation. Am I right, sir? So you don't just build. You don't just um, dig to lay a foundation. You have something in mind. You've already projected what you wanted. Now, God is not oblivious of all these things. He had something in mind for you. He had something in mind for me. Therefore, he has set a foundation. He himself did that in Christ. To the extent that anything can be built on this. Now, when I see anything, of course not anything outside of his will. Meaning that you will determine what you build. Because it says if anyone builds with gold, with silver, precious stone, wood, straw, Meaning that you are the one determining what you are building. Now you determine how high, what weight it is going to be. So whatever that is, you have a foundation that is sure. You have a foundation that is steady and has the ability, capacity to carry anything. And to the extent that it can even go to any height. So, you have, God has given you, or God has given each and every one of us the ability and the privilege of building ourselves. You know, we build all ourselves on our most holy faith. You are building yourself. You are responsible for building yourself. That is one side. We are also built as as a church, because we are a body. And what God is doing in my life is not in isolation of what he's doing in the church. What God is doing in me has an extension to the church. It's directly, uh, what's the word? It's directly related to the extent that if I am not well built, if I am not... Um, building myself appropriately, it has the effect on the entire body. So I want us to pay attention to that. To the extent that your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with God, is not more personal than it is corporately. Because what you are doing also matters to the body. Is that clear? Hallelujah. Christ is the foundation, meaning that we have equal opportunity. All of us have received Christ. We can build on Christ to whatever extent we choose to. This is our choice. We can build. 
the same Christ that I have is the same Christ that you have. The same foundation I have is the same foundation that you have. So, what you are building is totally dependent on you. Praise God. And what material do you use in building? <laughs> Architects know that um, it depends on how you want a building or the purpose of a building. That will determine the materials that we use. For a building that is going really high, the materials you use will not necessarily be the same as those that we use for, say, a duplex or a bungalow. So, the material used in building is critical and is chosen by you. So, how high are you going? That will determine the material choice that you pick. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, I'll start reading from verse 46. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. Is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Now, I want to relate building to what Jesus is saying here. He says, you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do the things that I say. So the person that does the things that he says is the one who is building accurately or who, is, who has rooted himself in the foundation such that when the storms of life come, when troubles and tribulations arise, that person is still standing because he is deeply rooted Paul was praying for the Ephesians church in chapter, th- chapter 3. He says that you may know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to know the depth, the height, the length and the breadth. So there's something about the foundation that we have and horse being rooted in that foundation. This is critical and this is important. Please follow me. But he who heard and did nothing, verse 49, is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation. Hmm. It's not that he's not building. (laughs) Can we liken these to... You know, some people will nowadays have substituted doing the word for prayer. You know, you cannot leave out the word of God and say that you are praying about the situation. For instance, you stole money and you are praying that they will not blow whistle. Why not return the money? That is the word of the Lord. So prayer in that in that kind of a situation is not going to solve the problem. You are built or you have built with no foundation, without foundation. So with your own hands, I think it's better just break down the house by returning the money. Against which stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. He says it was great. So sometimes it's embarrassing when you say people, someone, someone say that I have prayed about a particular situation. 
what, what is critical is the person is living out the word of God. You are not doing what the Lord said you should do. Give this. Say something to someone. You know, when God gives a word or when God gives an instruction, um, it is important that we do it. It is critical. We cannot substitute praying for obeying the word of God. Both of them go hand in hand. You have to be able to, with the word of God, pray. Pray the word of God to action. Pray the word of God to fulfillment in your life. And see what God will do. So Jesus said that, You call me Lord, Lord, I do not do the things that I say. Doing the things that I say. James chapter 1. This is an Apostles Bible. As in, I was looking for James at the end. James chapter 1. Start reading from verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word of God, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Wow. (laughs) How more can this be explained? Be doers of the word, not hearers only. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. What kind of a person is that, really? How would you look into a mirror and and you forget what you just saw? Perhaps that can happen if that's your first time of seeing a mirror or seeing the reflection of yourself. And you look at that guy and say, that, is that me? Then you go back and say, no, perhaps that's not me. For if anyone is the heir of the world and not a doer, is like a man observing the natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty... And continues in heat. And is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Now, that catches my attention. A doer of the work, not a doer of the word. This one shall be blessed in all that he does. A doer of the work. Pastor Tokwe in the last few services have made mention of the work. You know, the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, what shall we do to do the work of God? And he said that the work of God is for you to believe, 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 believe in the one whom he has sent. So this explains Luke chapter 6. That we read. Oh, glory, hallelujah. But you call me Lord, Lord, I do not do the things that I say. It means that the reason a lot of us do not do the word or are not doers of the word, is because we don't believe. It 
it is easy for you to do the things that you believe in. But how easy can it be for God's word for you? How easy? How easy can God's word be to you or for you to believe? Tell your neighbor, believe. Believe Believe the word. Believe the the one whom he has sent. Say it again. Believe. Believe believe the word. word. And believe the one whom he has sent. sent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are talking about foundation and digging deep. Because there's no way you can you can stand if you are not if you've not gone deep. You can't stand. This foundation is you have to be associated with <laughs> with this foundation. You have to reckon yourself to be part of this foundation. John chapter 15. I'll start reading from verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. Let's wait. (laughs) How can you be in Christ and you will not bear fruit? How can you be part of a tree or a vine and you will not bear fruit? How? Uh, Is there anybody that studied agriculture? Agriculture? Yes, sir. Is it possible in a tree there will be a particular branch that does not necessarily bear fruit when others are bearing fruit. Sorry? It should not be. So if it happens, it means there's something wrong. Thank you. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, it prunes that it may bear more fruit. I think we should just stay there a while. Two Wednesdays ago, we were talking about grafting in Romans. How that we were part of the wild olive. And that um, some guys had to be caught away for us to be grafted into this parent, new parent tree. And we established the truth that um, a grafted branch does not necessarily bear the fruit of the parent tree. Now, what happens? You have to reckon yourself. You have to consider yourself to be part of this new plant. You have to. That is the only reason why you will be a branch in a tree and you will not bear fruit. It's abnormal. It's not normal. Verse 3, Jesus says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and hide in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of himself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you Unless you abide in me. Jesus said, this, there are branches that don't bear fruit. Does that mean that they are not abiding in him, even though they are part of him? Or what does that literally mean? You are the branch. Jesus says, I am the vine. But some don't bear fruit. Some bear fruit. Now, he now says that if you abide in me, you will bear fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. Does that mean that the things you are trying to do or the fruit you are trying to bear, you are trying to bear it by yourself on your own? Without me, you can do nothing. Without Christ, you can do nothing. 
just like a house that is not firmly connected to its foundation will not stand. And a tree or a branch that is not firmly rooted or grafted into the parent plants cannot bear the fruit. So you and I, if we are not rooted in Christ, if we do not abide in him, we cannot bear good fruits. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And without me you can do nothing. So it is a guaranteed process that if you abide, if you are rooted, if you are if you are if you associate and reckon yourself to be part of this family, part of this tree, you will bear fruit. Hallelujah. So the foundation is the same. Foundation is the same for you, it's the same for me. And Christ is this foundation. But it is possible because you do not know your roots, you do not know your foundation, you can build anything. Perhaps you actually wanted to build a 10 story building, but you don't know the strength of your foundation, you don't know what your foundation can hold. Therefore, you limit yourself to building a two-story building. Whereas God has given unto you the resources and the ability to build as high as 10 story. But you don't know, or you did not know, or perhaps you are misinformed, that the foundation that you have can only carry a two-story building. Now, Jesus, in... John 17, or before that, 1 John 5, he says this is the record, this is the testimony that God has given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whosoever, whosoever has the Son has life. Whosoever does not have the Son does not have life. Now, he says he was praying for the believers or for his disciples in John 17, Jesus picked these words, John 17 from verse 1, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. You have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many that have, to as many as you have given him. Now it says in verse 3, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. This is eternal life, that they may know. This is eternal life, that they may know. This is eternal life, that you may know. The only true God. And Jesus whom he has sent. To what extent are you familiar? Do you reckon? Do you participate or fellowship with this foundation? To what extent are you rooted in this foundation? To what extent do you know this foundation that you have? It is yours. It is not going to get better. It is at its best. In fact, any word bigger, more, much that can use to describe that, it is, it is at its peak. The foundation is Christ. Get to know the Lord. Get to know Christ. Get to know 
the things that he has done for you. The things that he has done in you. So that with joy you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. Get to know Christ. Get to know Christ. Get to know Christ. Let's read that prayer. Ephesians chapter 3. For, from verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height. And to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. The lower you go, the higher you will have to go. The deeper you go in the things of God, the deeper your foundation, the higher you can go, then you can stand. Because if you stand without, is, without being rooted in your foundation, you will fall. And as you have established, if you don't believe, that is the cause of all these things. You call me Lord, but you don't do these things that I'm saying. Unbelief. Can you tell your neighbor, I believe? I believe, I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God to me. And I believe he bears fruits in my life. I Say it again, I believe. I believe, I believe the word of God. I believe, I believe that he bears fruits in my life. I I Say it to another person, I'm grounded in this truth. I'm grounded in, I'm grounded in the word. I am grounded in Christ. I'm grounded in Christ. Therefore, I Therefore, I stand against all adversities. Against all adversities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand after you are being rooted. Don't stand if you are not rooted in this foundation. You will fall. This is just all I have to say today. That we all have an equal opportunity. And God has given us this grace. It is equal to everyone. The foundation is Christ. And we are building we are building. Apart from the fact that you are building yourself, what you are building as well is the church. Because everyone is supplying something. You are supplying something. Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, know how you conduct yourself in, in the house of God. The church of the living God, which is the ground and pillar of truth. Some people will say that I can do this, I you know, Christianity is personal. God talks to me, so what you are saying in church does not necessarily matter. But a building cannot stand without pillars. Apart from the fact that you are personally rooted in Christ. It is also very important that you are rooted in a local church because that is... Let me, let me put it this way. The goal of God for a person is within his goal for the church. 
meaning that God has um, an idea of what he wants the church to be. So for you to work on yourself, build up yourself, which is a personal thing, and that contribution that you are making, having built up yourself, is also fulfilling the goal of God for the church. So this is not just for your sakes only. Yes, you have to be rooted. But the church of God needs you to be rooted as well. Because what part of a body is going to be detached from his body? He's going to be walking in, in, in discord. Can we say it again? I'm rooted in Christ. I am rooted in Christ. I am rooted in Christ. Hallelujah. Can we just bow your head? And speak to the Lord. Lord, we believe your word. We believe every word that you have spoken. We believe that your word is true. We do not only call you Lord, Lord. But we choose to do the things that you say. Because we believe. Because we believe. Because we believe. Because we believe. I believe your word. That I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That I live above sin and death. I believe your word. That you have given me peace. I believe your word. That I should not be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving. I make my request known to you. Your peace guards my heart. I believe your word. That I am the healed of God. I believe your word. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. That I have a godly heritage. I believe the word of God. That no weapon formed against me will prosper. I believe the word of the Lord. That I am blessed in my going out and my coming in. I believe the word of God. That his grace is sufficient for me. And that his power is made perfect in my weaknesses. I believe the word of God. That I have grace. I am filled with wisdom and excellence. I believe the word of God. Can you just speak those things I believe? I believe. I believe. I believe that your word is true. I believe that this foundation in which I stand is solid. It can bear anything. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe your word, O oh God. That I'm a doer of the word. I'm not a forgetful hearer. I do the word. I put the word of God to work. That the word of God is growing mightily in me. And it is prevailing. I believe. I believe. I believe your word. Jesus, I believe your word. He says, I've spoken these things to you. So that in me, you have perfect peace and confidence. In this world, you have tribulations and trials. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world for you. I have deprived it of his power to hurt you. Be confident that he is on your side. I believe the word. That I'm on his side. Nothing can work against me. That all things are working together for my good. Because I am the called of God. Hallelujah. We believe your word. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
Can we just sing that song? Can we sing it with the whole of our hearts? In the mode of worship and of singing unto God Almighty this morning. Hallelujah. Rebo Shahanara. we thank you we worship you we give you praise oh lord for your word has come to us this morning we appreciate you, father lord for another time in your presence in this place today we thank you father lord because your word has come unto us oh lord that we are hearer and the doer of your word in the mighty name of jesus that everyone present here today that have listened to what you have communicated unto us through your son oh lord we'll be able to walk with that you have communicated into our spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we praise the Lord? Oh, is it because the preacher gave us in a silent mood? Can we shout this morning and praise God? The God, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise. We adore you, Lord. For what you have done in this place today, O oh Lord. Because your word has come to us expressly. Father, we give you praise. We adore you. We worship you. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' name, we are worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Alright, today's our Thanksgiving. We can be on our feet. Thank you very much, you know. I, I want to also give my memory verse. Hallelujah. You know, we are all children now. I be Pastor Shas. You know, my kids, they challenge me one time. Why are you always calling mommy baby? Say, so well, she's my baby. Hallelujah. And for the matured mind, men too, you behave like maybe once in a while. You understand what I'm saying? If you are matured, you are understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the living Jesus. All right. Um, we have the... And also our babies are doing Thanksgiving today. Abby? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. We have the Kamala first. They are doing dedication of their baby. Hallelujah. Please, can we just gather around them at the back? We need to rejoice with them this morning. You know, even if I can't remember any of the name, I know that our name is also praise. Hallelujah. You know, one of the names is praise. So we are going to praise God very well as you are dancing this morning. Please, are we ready? Because we want to dedicate praise. Hallelujah. So today we are going to praise God. I want you to dance. You know, this is a family of faith. So it's not by accident that your name is faith. This is a family of faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to give thanks to God for the life of praise. You know, we were here during Thanksgiving service. And praise was like, this is the best atmosphere for me to comfort. Hallelujah. So the mother was dancing. And the baby was saying, I want to come out. And before you could say Jack Robinson, praise was here. Hallelujah. So I want us to praise God very well this morning. I want you to appreciate God for the life of this baby. Hallelujah. And for the life of this family. Please, I want you to dance. Don't just shake your body. I want us to dance. Hallelujah. Amen. Ebami 